in a super residential neighborhood. This is Little Italy of the city of Philadelphia. We're surrounded by row homes. We're in a row home. People, they see the red neon sign and they can't read the name, it's in Italian. I think curiosity gets a lot of people that aren't members that pop their head in, knock on the door, and the doorman answers. Welcome to Polizzi. And I think it takes people, when you walk through the curtain, it really transports you to a different time. And I think for people that don't know what the place is and have never heard of a social club, or it's really eye-opening. Come on, Cease. Come on, boy. Let's go. My name is uh, Joseph Baldino, and I am the president and chef of the Polizzi Social Club in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Polizzi Social Club was founded in 1918, so it's a little over 100 years old. Polizzi Social Club is a organization that was founded by Italian Americans from the town of Vasto in Abruzzo to help them assimilate into American culture. So they came here with uh, not a penny in their pocket and they opened this place to try to form a gathering place, I guess you could say, for themselves and their family. My uncle took it over in the 80s and held on to it until about 2016. When he passed, I, I, I took it over. This place is like a little treasure. So when you step in here, you step back into time. And that's what it's all about for me, to continue it. So these are the house rules. No lingering outside. Each member should bring three non-members. Someone that you want and bring them to your mom's house, don't bring them here. What happens at Polizzi stays at Polizzi. I felt like these rules would um, really um, articulate the, uh, the place best. This guy is the official vice president. This is Caesar. HR, human resources, any issues, they have to discuss it with Caesar. The original rules were uh, you had to be a male and you had to be from the town of Vasto. Other than that, you were accepted in. Uh, a lot of these guys, this was their first home. When they came over, they didn't even have a place to live. There's an original charter with those rules that I just mentioned. So I had to repeal and replace them with my own rules. Now everyone uh, above the age of 21 can can come. You would have to apply and obviously get accepted to become a member. You have to know a current member. I wanted to make it more inclusive to, to all people, not just Italian Americans. Give everyone the ability to, to see my culture and to have an insight of, of how we eat and the music that we play and, and how we live. But I want this place to be a, a social place. I want people to put their cell phones away and talk to one another when they're at the bar. I also put one uh, that said no tagging on social media, no, no reviews, nothing like that, because this place shouldn't be reviewed. The food shouldn't be, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's part of uh, my soul, my family's. It's something elevated above that, something more special for me. We have some more, oh, sorry, Caesar. We have some more um, members. This is a list of all the old members and their addresses. I know it died down when, when the guys got really old. And it was like a, a whirlwind when I first opened because I was not expect, I honestly was expecting it to fail. We had a few customers in the beginning and then the word of mouth started. At this point, we only let a certain number of people in. So you can come to the door, and, and if, if, if we're at capacity, we're at capacity, there's nothing you can do about it. Because I, I, I want to preserve and maintain the quality. One, yeah, one sausage, two caps, and two artichokes. What do you have in the oven? Everything. Everything. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. So this building here with the mural on the side was my first job. I was a busboy here at this restaurant called Mr. Martino's. I started there when I was 14 years old. We used to play baseball in this parking lot. Obviously now it's a little too crowded in the neighborhood. So my family, we all grew up in this general area. 
A lot of uh, my menu items were really um, inspired by my grandfather's bar and grill next door. A lot of the recipes were, uh, you know, homemade from, from my mom. And one of the things I wanted to duplicate was when you come here, you don't order an individual plate. You kind of just get bombarded with food like you were you would be at, at my home. I, I grew up in that restaurant as a kid, watching my uncle cook and my aunt and my mom and all those folks. Oh, you're gonna take two? Two. No, you're gonna take one with an octopus. Carlos, just leave it right there. Which is really when I fell in love with the industry and, and serving people and making people feel a certain way. Uh, I went to New York, studied culinary, moved back to Philly, worked for Mark Vetri. I uh, traveled back to Sicily and worked on a farm there and decided I wanted to start my own place. I think I found my little niche and this place embodies that. Signature menu items that we have are the escarole and beans, the calamari with peas. We have a stromboli, we have a fritto misto, a tripe, which is also uh, an Italian-American staple. We have a Caesar salad on there, crab and spaghetti, which is uh, my mom's recipe. Having the Italian market down the street and there's a little cheese shop down the street too called Mancuso's, having all that at my hands is, is great. I could just walk over, I go to the market every morning, gather my ingredients. This guy was a little baby, he was in a coach when I, when I met this guy. Yeah, yeah. This is Jake, he used to work for me at Zeppoli and also at Polizzi. I get all my mozzarella from him. It's beautiful. We're gonna make stromboli tonight. So right. I'll take one of those, salted. Salted. Jake, I'll take one of those cacio cavallos too, the round one right there, the little one, yeah. And that's it. I, okay, I'll take it. Smoked? Smoked or dry? I'll take it. My mom still lives two doors down. My aunt lives right up the block. And I grew up right up this little street right here, Crawl Street. It's my Uncle Ernie's house. He was the president before me, right here, this white one. This is my neighborhood. It's a little Italy of Philadelphia, basically. The neighborhood has changed a lot, and that's even more reason why it's important to me to maintain this place and to keep it the way it was, because these were the guys that started this neighborhood. <laughs> Go ahead, Ma. Oh, this is Dolores. You meet Dolores? Hi, how are you, yeah. dear? Hi. She's hi. been with me since the beginning. Uh, hi, hi. 28 and 30. I'm pretty much hands-on that I have another restaurant in New Jersey that I kind of split my time between, but I'm very hands-on with my manager, Jorgen. He and I uh, collaborate a, a lot on cocktails. This place is so special. There's just something about it. Before I was a, even a employee here, I used to come here, sit and drink and eat. And there's just something about this place that feels like home. Working for Joey's great. It feels like working for a family member. Everybody here is a regular. So you get to know people, you know, you have lasting relationships with some people. You know, we have um, some guys that come in, you know, have a standing reservation once a week. There's a range of different characters that come through these doors. I have a regular customer, uh, his name is Russ. Uh, he sits at the bar. Sometimes he gets here at, I don't know, 4.30 right before we open and he doesn't leave until 3 a.m. I actually put a plaque on the side of the bar to reserve his seat. Nobody has a plaque, so this was like, this was like a birthday present from Joey for my 69th birthday, and this is like, it's almost an embarrassment, so you cannot mention the plan. Joey, I met when he was probably 15. He worked at a place called Mr. Martino, waiting tables. He is a beautiful, beautiful human being. All the staff is like your best childhood friend. And then you've got Joey's quirky food from his childhood. And then it really is a social club because you can come in here any night by yourself with friends and have a great conversation at the bar. You can sit in the dining room. It's just, it's heaven on earth. This space is so small that when it's full, it just feels like a party. I have a great kitchen crew, um, my chef, uh, Joe. He's amazing. The service starts at about five. It doesn't end until three. Kitchen closes at one. Uh, but Jorgen is back there shaking up drinks until uh, 
sometimes until four. Like any family, it gets stressful, but uh, we all love each other and we're all family. Up close with Joe Gorman. Yes. Thank God our kitchen staff so good, I love here. I've had mostly all these guys here since I've started. People come in, they feel like they're going back into the 40s and 50s. It's a step out of reality for them. They come in here, most people know each other when they come in because they are members. Myself and the staff just give them a nice, um, friendly feeling when they come in. You have Dolores, she's probably the, the elder of the crew, and she's like she's been in South Philly her whole life. And you know, she comes up, she hugs you right away. It's just fun to come to work here. I know you. What's going on? What's even happening? I don't even see you, brother. How are you? How are you? Thanks for coming. I love you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, brother. I don't have a relationship with any other chef in Philly like I do with Mike. It's easy to reminisce, and I'm not just doing this shit for the camera. I feel like okay? he remembers more than I do. I remember, <laughs> like, I mean, first of all, we started out, like, when was this? I think 20? I was 25, and... We were both 25. And I don't know. I mean, I fucking love Joey like a brother. And I don't just mean that in like a bro line cook way. I mean, you know, we, we worked together for three years and you get to know people really well in kitchens. Especially in a small kitchen like that. And Joey was always a really stand up guy, really supportive, really nice, always nice. Before it was cool to be a nice chef. But that, the fact that you have created something that nobody else has done and done it exactly your way is what's special. This shit is your family and your lineage. I feel like I'm part of the club too, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. I mean, I am actually. You are. I'm a card member. You are. Yeah, I'm like number like 100 or something. Exactly. Yeah. First, first, uh, first, first round. First yeah. round. First round draft pick. It's really like special, man. Thanks, Mike. You so didn't have to, to be do able that. To fucking I appreciate hang out. Shut that. Shut the fuck up, man. I love you. Appreciate it. Love you too. All right. So you want to eat while you're here? Is it good, Mike? Mm. Lights out, bro. So good. Everything here is amazing. Preserving everything was one of my prime goals. Not to touch anything. Everything from the Sinatra picture to the uh, cigarette machine behind me. I thought it was really important to keep everything intact make this place as authentic as it was in 1918. I get goosebumps when old members will come in and they'll look at a photo on the wall and they'll say, oh, that was my grandfather. Or I remember when I was mopping the floor here when I was a busboy. That to me makes this place what it is.